like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I Jeremiah chapter 52, beginning with verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 52, beginning with verse 15. Then Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive certain of the poor, of the people. And the residue of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away that fell to the king of Babylon and the rest of the multitude. Listen. But Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. I want to read verse 16 again to you. But Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. Title the message this afternoon, The Lord's Vine Dressers. He's got some vine dressers in the land. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we understand, Lord, you are the husbandman. We understand that Jesus is the true vine. But, Lord, you have some vine dressers in the land. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless and that you anoint as we teach your word this afternoon. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Not all that were in Jerusalem went into Babylon captivity. Certain poor of the land, God spared. Now, why was it that these certain ones were not taken captive to Babylon? Why is it that these certain of the poor of the land that were vine dressers and husbandmen, why did they find favor? Obviously, Babylon and this captain don't care about Jerusalem, right? But God... But God, he knew, listen to me, he knew there was coming a day when his people would return. Whew. That they would return out of the Babylon captivity. They would return to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And when they returned, he didn't want them to return to a land that had no fruit, that had no sustenance. Are you listening? 
So God in his mercy put it in the hearts of Babylon leadership that certain poor of the land would be left as vine dressers and husband. And I believe in this hour that not all the church as a whole is in confusion. Babylon means confusion. They couldn't even sing the Lord's song. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song when they were required of a song? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? It says they hung up their harps on the willows. We can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Anybody listening? When you're in confusion, it's hard to sing. It's hard to bless the Lord. It's hard to be happy. It's hard to be joyful. And there are many in this hour that are in confusion. Anybody listening? But not everyone, not everyone is in confusion. Praise God. As already mentioned, the Lord has a remnant that haven't gone into confusion, that haven't gone into Babylon, as it were, in this hour. The book of Revelation calls it mystery Babylon. Still confusion. Still confusion. So what is the responsibility of the vine dressers? John chapter 15, verse 1 through 10. Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are pruned or clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Did you hear that? Now you are clean or purged, pruned, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. What is the purpose of the vine dressers? Is everyone today a vine dresser? The vine dressers were the ones that kept the vines. They are the ones that pruned the vines. Are you listening? Jesus said, the words which I have spoken unto you. That's what purges. Not everyone is speaking truth today. Anybody listening? And I'm not saying just truth as far as every neighbor speak truth to his neighbor. I'm not talking about just in general. I'm talking about speaking the truth of God's word. Not every minister today is speaking the truth. Amen? They're afraid to offend the congregation, afraid of losing the numbers, afraid that people will leave their congregation if they speak the truth. Well, they're going to answer to the Lord one day. Amen? The Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. There are ministers today that are quenching the Holy Spirit because they will not speak, thus saith the Lord. They will not speak what God is saying. 
And the people are not being pruned as they should because the truth is not being given to them. Amen. The truth, people, it's not easy to receive always. Sometimes it's downright very difficult to receive. It's easy to receive what you agree with. But what if you're holding on to something in the flesh or holding on to something in your life that you'd rather hold on to that than to give up that for the truth? Well, then you're not going to accept the truth, are you? And you're not going to be pruned. You're not going to be purged. Amen? There's things in the Bible that God's people today do not want to. To agree with that they do not want to accept that doesn't mean they're not saved but they're not going on to perfection they're not listen the danger of rejecting truth is you can be cut off because jesus said if you don't continue to bear fruit you will be cut off he didn't say that if you bear fruit a week ago or a month ago or a year ago that that that's enough to be saved he said you got to continue to bear fruit Let's continue to read. If any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. He's speaking to believers. These, this has nothing to do with the world. He's talking about those that abide in him. He's talking about those that once abide. Did, did you know that Lucifer, the Bible says, he abode not in the truth? That tells me he at one time was abiding in the truth. He didn't continue to abide in the truth. And even as a believer, we can fail to abide in the truth, people. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. What's the requirement for your prayers to be answered? You must abide in him. His word must abide in you. Amen? If your prayers are not being answered, it could be you're not abiding in him. And his word's not abiding in you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. Not just bear fruit, but bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. God's not interested in you and I just producing some fruit. He's interested in us producing bountifully much fruit. Are you listening? As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Praise God. So we see the end result is the love of God. Abiding in his love, walking in his love. Praise God. Not all of God's people today are walking in the love of God. Many walking in fear today. Amen. Fearful, afraid, shrinking back, hesitating, vacillating, double minded, not moving on in God, not moving forward in God. Find yourself not being bold as a lion. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. The guilty flee when no man pursues. God's people should be the boldest, the most bold people on the earth. Amen. You and I, brothers and sisters, have the truth. We should be the most confident on the earth. And our confidence is not in ourselves. Amen. Our confidence is in him. Our confidence is in the Lord. Now, just because you're saved does not mean that you're going to stay saved. Don't believe this once saved, always saved lie from the pit of hell. You must continue in the truth. You must continue to be purged, brothers and sisters. 
Praise God. I shared with you that years ago I spoke to someone I know that had lost her husband, older woman, about, the, about really a lot like be my grandmother. And I said to her, I said, Mama, I said, has the Lord ever purged you? And she said, he took my husband, Jack. And when she said that, there was a bitterness. There was a resentment in her. Are you listening? Another time I came in and listened, I heard her, she was gossiping. And I mentioned it to her. And she left the building, and I was told she went and wept. Are you listening? God purging her of that gossip, of that gossiping tongue. Anybody listening? She was religious. I wouldn't say she was spiritual. I wouldn't say she was even saved. But she was religious. She was a Methodist. But God was trying to help her. She was so bitter over, you know, her husband was an alcoholic. And when he died, she blamed God for that. Are you listening, people? So, just because the Lord purges us or tries to purge us doesn't mean that the fruit is going to be glorifying God, right? The Lord tried to purge her, and the fruit wasn't, wasn't glorifying God. The fruit was bitter. The fruit was evil. There was a bitterness there. No, it wasn't the Lord that purged her or took her husband. The man was an alcoholic. Anybody listening? So for her to say, he took my Jack, he took my husband, and be bitter about it, that's not allowing the truth to purge you. Anybody listening? You'll find, as a believer, there's things you'll share with others, even other believers, and they won't receive them. They're not willing to be pruned. Amen. So who are the vine dressers today? Those that are sharing the truth. Amen? Now, mostly it would be a minister. But even God's people, you have the opportunity, you have the privilege to share truth with your neighbor. You could share truth with your loved ones, with your family members. Anybody listening? If they receive the truth, then they can be purged. Praise God, people. There's a need in this hour for vine dressers, the Lord's vine dressers, to work with the husbandman, the father, and to work with the true vine. Amen? To, to purge the branches. How many know not all uh, of God's people today are sheep? Did you know that? Some move on from that fallen carnal nature, that animal nature. They become shepherds. You can't be a sheep and a shepherd at the same time. If you become a shepherd, you're no longer a sheep. You're not, you don't have that animal fallen nature, that animal instinct nature anymore. Now you, you walk uprightly. Now you're in the image and the likeness of God. Are you listening, people? You're not just a dumb sheep. You're not dumb. That's why the Lord likened his people to be sheep. Because they're dumb. And because they, they're very uh, timid. 
But God doesn't want us to remain sheep people. He doesn't want us to remain lambs and sheep. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to realize that we're not under the animal kingdom. We're not of the animal kingdom. We're supposed to be ruling over the animal kingdom. But we know in the fall that we became subject to the animal kingdom to the degree that animals can intimidate us as humans. Anybody listening? But God said to Adam, he was to rule over the animals. When you have a fallen nature, when you're born into this world, you've got a sinful nature, an animal nature, a, a, a nature that's innate, uh, which is, which is uh, based upon instinct. You're going to do what you feel to do. You're going to do what you what you what your innate desire is. But when God changes you, you've been transformed, amen. You've been born again, born of the spirit, glory to God. He gives you that new nature, the nature that makes you to walk uprightly, the nature that makes you to be like himself, praise God. We're not supposed to act like animals. We're not supposed to be animals. We're not supposed to talk, amen, and act like we're from the animal kingdom. We're supposed to be walking as human beings on this earth. And I will tell you, brothers and sisters, the world more and more every day are acting like animals. They're, they're being taught they came from the animal kingdom. Many today are they're, they're acting like they are animals. And that's because that's the nature they have. They don't realize they're supposed to have a free will, that they don't have to be slaves. Amen. How many know before the cross, you're a slave? Hmm? You're a slave to sin. You're a slave to your flesh. And yes, you're a slave to Satan. You're captive. But at, at the cross and after the cross, listen to me. You come to the cross, praise God, and that flesh is being crucified, glory to God. Listen to me. You come to the place of a crisis, a crossroad. You come to that place where you're no longer going to walk in the flesh. You're not going to walk anymore after the flesh. You're going to begin to walk spiritual. You're going to walk in the spirit. Are you listening, people? But it's at the cross, and, and when you are of the cross, listen, you now have a will. See, the world today doesn't have a will because they're slaves. They have a will, but it's in bondage, right? They, don't, they can't make their own choices. They don't even know why they make the choices they make. And some are in more bondage than others. But when the Lord delivers you, you have a will that's free. And now you can make choices, praise God. And those choices are your choices. You can't make your own choice until you come to the cross, until you come to Jesus Christ. He's got to deliver you. And you don't do your own will once he delivers you, do you? No, you do the will of the Father. You do God's will. Amen? To the degree that you actually surrender your own will for his will. Even Jesus did. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So even though God delivers us, and we, now we have a will, we have a, the power to choose, if you do your own will, even though it's, you're free to make a choice for the first time when you get saved, that doesn't mean you're going to do the will of the Father. It doesn't mean you're going to relinquish that will. See, God delivered us. He makes us free. He delivers us 
He delivers our will so that we can surrender that will. You can't surrender your will if you're in bondage, if you're being held captive. Amen. So the Lord doesn't deliver you and I so we can do whatever we want. He doesn't deliver us so that we can live in sin and, and say, I'm still going to heaven. He doesn't deliver us so that we can continue in lasciviousness, which is a license to sin. He didn't deliver us so we can sin. He delivered us from sin. Amen. He's delivering us so that we can obey him and be delivered from sin to live overcoming lives. Praise God. Do you know most in the church today don't even know what I'm talking about right now? They don't have a clue what I'm talking about. When I'm sharing with you, that is the word of God that purges the flesh. They don't have a, they don't have a clue what that even means. That is so beyond them. That is so far far removed from them. They don't even have an inkling of what that has to do with. Sad, but it's true. But brothers and sisters, that's the only thing that can purge us. It's the only thing that can clean us. It's the only thing. There's nothing else that can purge the believer so that we can bring forth more fruit. Only his words. Praise God. So if you're sharing his word, either as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, or you're just a believer, right? You're, you're a believer in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. Whoever you share the truth with, you become that vine dresser. Are you listening, people? They're not always going to react joyfully to the vine dressers. Don't expect them to. Don't expect people to love the truth. Don't expect people to just say, oh, yeah, come on over here and prune me. Go ahead and cut that off. Cut this off. Get rid of that. Purge me. No. No, they'll look at you and say, you're the enemy. Hmm? What you're saying is not profitable. What you're saying is not fruitful. I was sharing some things with someone the other day. And uh, he said to me, well, I feel like this conversation's becoming unfruitful. And I thought, no, you just don't want to talk about what we're talking about. You don't want to talk about the fact that pharmacia is sorcery. You don't want to talk about the fact that pharmacy, the word pharmacy, Sorcery, witchcraft. You don't want to talk about that. So that's unfruitful conversation. Yeah, I agreed with him. I said, you're right. It is unfruitful because you won't receive the things I'm saying to you. And you're not going to be purged. You're not going to continue to bring forth fruit. And I told him, I says, you can even be cut off if you won't let God cut away those things you're hanging on to. Whatever displeases the Lord, listen to me, whatever displeases God's got to be cut off, people. It's got to be purged out. It's got to be removed. Listen, you cannot share the truth with somebody about lying if you're a liar yourself. Amen. You're a hypocrite. How much purging do you think God can do with your life with, if you're a liar yourself and you're trying to help other people that are lying? And there's so many different examples I could share with you. But how in the world do you think you're going to help somebody else? If Just for example, how could you look at another believer and say something to him about cursing and swearing if you curse and swear yourself? Huh? What if you're a gossiper and you're still a believer? 
Do you think that you're going to be able to help purge somebody that's guilty of, of gossip? No, you won't. We have to be free ourselves. We have to be purged ourselves first, brothers and sisters. Amen? But I do believe God's calling us, not just to be branches in the vine, but to move to that position, that place of vine dressers. Amen? Not to be a sheep or a, uh, or, or a lamb, praise God, but to go on to be shepherds, glory to God, that we actually could be used to feed the sheep. Sheep don't feed sheep. That's why they need a shepherd. Anybody listening? There's a lot of animals that can feed one another, right? Sheep don't feed sheep. Sheep don't take care of sheep. That's why they're so vulnerable to lions and, 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 and those in the uh, animal kingdom that just pounce on them. And that's why God has always had shepherds to sh shepherd the flocks. Now think about that spiritually. You're vulnerable to Satan. He seeks whom he may devour. Amen? And you need a shepherd. Praise God. You need the good shepherd to protect you, to watch over you, to provide for you. Amen? Praise God. And then God has some under shepherds that are not afraid of the lion. Amen. They're not afraid of the bear. They're not afraid like so many today. You know, the Bible talks about the minister that's a hireling. Amen. He gets, a, he's, he becomes afraid and he runs, leaves the sheep because he's afraid of the wolf or afraid of the devil. Anybody listening? Shepherds are called to protect the flock, to oversee the flock, to protect, protect, protect the flock. Amen? To provide for the flock, to feed the flock. Glory, hallelujah, and God has some shepherds. Praise God, he's got some shepherds in the land. He's got some vine dresses in the land. Praise God. Amen. And every single one of us can be a vine dresser. Every one of us. The poor of the land, he left for vine dressers. They found favor in God's eyes. Amen. They didn't all go to Babylon. They were not all in Babylon captivity. And you don't have to be in Babylon captivity in this hour. You don't have to be in confusion. Praise God. God can use you to help purge somebody else. That they might bring forth fruit and glorify the Father. Amen. Praise God. And remember, the end result is God's love. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. God bless you.